and we're turning this lifeboat into a liveaboard. Those of you who've been watching from the beginning will remember that when we bought her, Luya was very orange. Then she was blue because Maroon was discontinued, but now it's back, baby, and we're going red. Where's your mixing pot? We're gonna mix the whole thing. I'm starting to get that much stuff to do. Are you like sucking on a sour candy? Yep. As you can see, we're using Pettit, and this is just sort of, um, I think it's like a hardener or protective additive that you add to this. So you put it in right before you paint, and I'm pretty sure that you can only add it for a certain amount of time before you paint. So we knew we were going to use the whole can, so it was okay to do it. Otherwise, you measure both parts and mix separately so that you don't kind of contaminate your main paint container before you're ready to go. Hopefully it still lets me uh, shake it. It's like at Starbucks when they put a little bit too much ice in my drink. So before we could paint, we sanded off what we had done before and then of course made sure everything that hadn't been painted was sanded too, then washed the boat as you can see in the time lapse that's coming up and then got our first coat of paint on. I love how you can see the water drying here in the sun as the time goes on in this time lapse. We'll see, you'll see in a second, we're kind of rolling and tipping here. We tried a few different things. Rolling and tipping is where the first person rolls it on and then the next person takes a dampened paintbrush and sort of extends the wet edge so that it doesn't dry. You can blend the whole area in together. We ended up finding that it didn't really help us all that much, so we kind of just moved on to torn painting and kind of keeping it going as fast as possible. We found that it worked better, honestly, for one person to do it at a time than to try and kind of team up and do it. Lots of people have had a lot of success with rolling and tipping. We got a 10-foot paint job that we're pretty happy with. So this is kind of more of the same, but it was interesting working with this paint. It's really, really thin, and unlike most other paints I've used, it's really a question of building up layers. So we would do a really quick layer and then scotch bright it, wash it, and then paint it again. So you'll see a little bit of that coming up. It's really a question yeah. yeah, of layering. And so we got a couple of coats on this summer. We're doing a couple of, or sorry, last summer. We're doing a couple more this summer. Over time, I guess you build up a really nice, hard, solid set of coats of paint. But yeah, it's a, it's a process and really interesting to see how it's done on a boat. So this part's going to be under the solar panels, so we're not too worried about it being totally perfect. But it'd be nice to get one more step towards being all one color. Which center beam? On the, this one that goes across. Oh. Why? Because uh, we don't want it, and it forces the like sucking the fiberglass in and denting it. Huh. I thought we were leaving it and just boxing it in. No, because I want to... How are we moving it back? I want to move it back, so I'm going to put a different huh. beam in. But I want it a couple inches back so that the steering station can be a little farther back so I can have more knee room. More leg room. Sand it and then paint it again, is that right? Yeah. 
and depending on coverage, we will uh, see how many times we have to <laughs> paint it. Number two on here, still a little patchy. First coat in this crack. And a quick little fast forward to show you what she looks like now. This is our 10 foot paint job. Who knows, maybe by the end of this summer we'll have it down to a five foot paint job. Anyway, thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next episode.